My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Do you ever get home with all your things, but you have nowhere to set them? So they all just end up in an ugly, disorganized, and hard to work with pile like this, causing you unneeded stress? Well, don't let it ruin your life. Just get an Alfred backpack hanger. It's reliable, versatile, sturdy, and it holds your stuff. Available in stainless steel and aluminum. Get yours today. Before Jiga, you had local shops, trusted collaboration, and better pricing. But they couldn't handle every job, and sometimes they would go silent on quotes. With InstaQuote platforms like Zometry and Protolabs, there's a cost for speed. No supplier relationships or direct communications. Jiga gives you access to vetted manufacturers with reliable capacity and pricing built for professional production. These are the two parts of the housing that we have to make. We were given CAD data. Our client actually printed the master parts for us, but we need the CAD so that we can strategize and figure out the mold boxes and do the splitter boards, of course, for these two parts. So the blue here is the splitter boards and we print those in one piece to help us make the molds. We need to make 60 sets of these cases and we need to make two sets of each of the molds and to do that we're going to use some three quarter inch pine to make the mold boxes with you can see the splitter boards here that are 3d printed already and we're going to build the box around those splitter boards so it fits and seals nice and tight some work or a fair amount of prep is needed for these master parts. So we need to plug all the bosses. This is where the screws go through to seal everything once the two halves come together to keep dust out mainly. We use some white glue around the edges and a little bit of modeling clay here to seal the master part to the splitter board and then the box goes around it. So that's one half, and we need to do this to the other side. The other side's a little more complex, has a bunch more holes, and also some pretty deep bosses. Those are 3D printed parts that go in there to plug up those holes. And we put a little white glue on there to get a good seal. And the reason that these have stems on them is that we need to get these out afterwards and we need to be able to easily get them out afterwards. So again, some more forethought is needed when you're doing this so that you can take these plugs out after the silicone is poured. We're gonna put a little more white glue around this one as well. So we'll seal this one to the splitter board for the other half. And we'll get that in there set really good. And we'll also put in these corner pieces to help us reduce the amount of silicone that we use. To make these molds, we're gonna use silicone inks GI 1040. So this is a 40 shore tin cure silicone. We like using tin cure because we don't have any mold inhibition. And it's relatively easy for us to do that. We also add some colorant in here. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this colorant later on in this segment. We mainly add the colorant just so that we can know which mold halves go together to help us easily identify which ones fit together um, since we have more than one set of molds for each half. Once the silicone is mixed, it goes into the degassing chamber and it gets degassed. We need to remove all the bubbles out of the silicone the best we can before we pour that onto the part to make our mold and then this helps give us a bubble-free part. 
we're going to drop in silicone into these long boss holes where the screws go ultimately to make sure they get filled first and we, we do that at the beginning to make sure we know they're filled we also have vibration running at the same time so we have a vibration table unit next to these to help float any bubbles that are in there to the top surface so we don't get any trapped bubbles particularly on these deep bosses like this we do not want there to be any bubbles and the silicone to tear because there is a bubble that's formed in there so super important now the molds have cured and we need to remove the splitter board and any sort of flash that has creeped in underneath the part and there's actually more there than i would have liked uh, but so we have to clean that up that happens sometimes remove the splitter board and now you can see cleanup that's needed and we remove all these plugs so that we can pour the second half of the mold and you can see the key seal around there as well now what we're doing here is we're drilling a one meter millimeter hole into the master part these master parts are not that sacred and if we drill a one millimeter hole then we can literally just drop our copper vent um, wire in there we're not the super glue anything and drilling the hole just makes the whole process that much easier and more precise and repeatable for the future we use some mold release on all the silicone so that we don't have an issue of the second half sticking to the first half of the silicone we use vaseline and naphtha uh, a mixture to prevent that sticking together and the same mold box goes back just like before we just tap in the copper wire for our vent holes the gray on the left is the poor sprue and the coppers all the vent okay let's make the second half of the molds for these silicone molds. Again, we're still using the 1040 from Silicone Inks and we add in some colorant here as well to color the silicone for the second half of the molds so we can tell which ones go with which. Once that's mixed up really good and we scrape the sides really well into the vacuum tank, it goes. And we only have a three gallon vacuum tank and this becomes a little bit of a problem for bigger pours like this. So we have to work with what we have for each project. A, a bigger tank would be ideal in the five gallon range would be the best. Let's pour that. I pour that in the middle and then I make sure that the silicone goes down these deep bosses and we don't have any air bubbles in there and we get good parts in the end. We'll do this to the other part. Mix in some colorant here as well so we can get a good silicone mold that's bubble free let's remove the vents so those copper wires and we reveal the mold here all right let's take the second half apart and we're having some sort of an issue the silicone is not releasing from the parts and we don't know why we are stumped uh, this now this the side of the yellow one here comes off but we're getting some tear on some of the pieces it's not releasing from the master part and the gray we never even get the gray out we have to cut it out and so we're a little stumped and we don't know why and i'll give you my hypothesis later on why i think this is happening so we end up having to remake the molds and redo them because we were not getting good molds we're using some silicone from before and layering that in there and we are very very lightly tinting the silicone at this point my guess is that we added too much colorant into the silicone and this caused an issue and did not allow the silicone to release correct 
Uh, I never could get silicone inks to verify this as an issue. They wouldn't cop to any sort of thing. We tried to reuse some of these with some platinum silicone here um, to make the second half of the molds using the first half of the silicone on one side already. We were hoping that this was going to be a way to make some molds faster and quicker. But we end up having cure inhibition issues with the platinum. And this doesn't work either with the platinum silicone uh, against those master parts. We didn't print those, and so we don't know exactly what kind of material it is, but they don't work. So after that mold making fiasco where we wasted a lot of silicone and a lot of time, we end up with our final silicone molds here and we start making some parts. Always be safe, use an organic respirator, wear some gloves when you're mixing urethane, certainly when you're doing it in this volume of parts where there's a fair amount of material that has to be mixed up. We pre-color one half of the mixture and this is BJB's uh, WC85M, I think. So the medium stuff. And we're adding some blue in here just for a little bit of that ice color. We want to make their parts uh, look like they're ice colored. Uh, the blue will also give you a little bit more UV stability, but this resin is pretty UV stable already. The color is really just for effect. That's for you, Tony. That is a beautiful gassing montage right there. Just great to see the bubbles explode up that close. Everything is gravity fed on these molds. So we tip the molds. You saw me tip the glass in there in the very beginning. We pour in the low spot and we allow the air to escape through the high points of the mold out of the vent holes you can see a little close up we know the mold is filled when we have the resin coming out of into the tank it goes here we do two at a time we'll cure them under heat and pressure for you know maybe six five six hours something like that then we can demold them Once they've cured, and we remove the little um, nubs from the vents and we pull the parts out. We have some minor cleanup to do here and there, depending upon how old the molds are. The, good, the, the parts in the beginning are very clean, but the mold will degrade over time. These molds are super strong, really durable. And these are the other sets of molds pull these out of here so there's minimal cleanup this is what you want when you're making a lot of parts you want minimal cleanup like that flash is really too much <laughs> uh, even though it's super easy but we do go through with a file and in some cases we have to do a little dremeling as the molds disintegrate over time I'm not making any more molds we're gonna spend time cleaning up the parts as we need to here because we've made a lot of extra molds that we don't need. These are the two halves. This is how they go together. There's ultimately a gasket that goes in between the two to hold them together. So they don't fit so great together now because there's no gasket. But once that gasket is in there, they'll line up perfect and go together really nice. So these are the units that we made. They'll end up getting screwed together. And there's a whole bunch of electronics that go inside of these parts and we don't have any involvement in that our job here is just to make these housings and then get them to our client for assembly and put into this burning man unit so we bag them all up into a plastic bag 
and then we put them in a box and ship them off to the client for their final assembly. And I want to show you here what the final parts look like so you can get an idea of what happens after we are done. So they have a team of volunteers, I believe, that assemble all of these things in a little bit of an assembly line and get these parts ready to go into that round mothership for Burning Man. And now this was done in 2004, so this was done early spring, uh, summer. And this is what the parts look like when they're assembled, lit up before they go into this mothership. So these units, you can kind of see them there where the door is open on the side walls. They are the control units for the exterior lights of this mothership. And you can kind of see them there here on the right a little bit mounted in the ship. And this is the unit, the treaded tank treaded unit put together on the playa uh, in Burning Man at Burning Man uh, 2004. They're just moving it into place. They have wireless remote control for this whole thing. This is quite the construction, very impressive. And here you can get to see it with actual audio on the playa. And those controllers are just the boxes for the electronics that control the lights on the outside of this air conditioned mothership that ultimately controls the lights for the main iceberg stage during Burning Man and the concerts that they give. Fantastic project. Thanks to uh, my client for allowing us to build this stuff for them. Great project. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Bots and Design. I'm now on Blue Sky and unfortunately still on Instagram. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.